please welcome Stephanie Naughty Olson, founder and CEO of We Are Rosie. Hello, everyone. My name is Stephanie Natty Olson. I am the founder and creator of We Are Rosie, and it is an absolute honor and privilege to be here with all of you virtually today, especially after attending the 3% conference the last two years and being absolutely mind blown by the insights and stories that were shared. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing a little bit about the background of We Are Rosie, why I founded the company in hopes that I can inspire each of you to do everything that you can to push our industry forward through agile work, through flexible work, through modern working arrangements to create a, an industry that is inclusive and welcoming for everyone. So I'll take you back to 2018. Um, it was not, not a great time in my life. I had just quit my job. I had two babies at home. I was exhausted, I was despondent, I was um, feeling dejected, and I had just walked out of my job for the first time in my life. I had never been unemployed, and I had gotten so incredibly frustrated and fed up with the way that the people doing the work in our industry were treated. I had spent 15 years of my life working primarily in media. I'd worked at some startups that got sold to major conglomerates as well. And so I'd kind of seen it all. And it became increasingly untenable for me to witness the discrimination, the harassment, the otherization of so many people in our industry. It touched such a broad swath of the people doing the work, whether it was racism, ageism, sexism, ableism, discrimination based on those in the LGBTQ community. It seemed to touch almost everyone I knew in this industry, and it was super frustrating for me. I had tried to change the industry from the inside myself. I had gotten a lot of excuses for why it couldn't change. I was told that I was overreacting, that I was being dramatic. Um, and I finally decided I can't be complicit by existing in this space anymore if this is how it's gonna be. So when I quit my job, I wasn't sure that I would ever come back. I spent the next three months of my life talking to anyone and everyone I could to hear their stories about why this industry wasn't working for them. I was really looking for camaraderie. I was looking for a place to belong because I had just done this completely batshit crazy thing, walking out of my career at the pinnacle without a game plan. What I found over the next few months in having a lot of conversations, I had a lot of fucking coffee over those three months because I couldn't spend any money and I wanted to meet everybody I could. I met a lot of people I never would have met while I was still working. You know, you put these blinders on when you have a job and you think everybody that's important, everybody that knows anything is here within these four walls. And this is my crew. This is everything I need to know. Well, how wrong I was when I had those blinders off and I had a minute to breathe and work independently. Um, I began to chat with a lot of people that I never would have met otherwise. And I began to hear some very familiar stories about why they had left traditional employment, whether it was an agency, a tech platform, or a brand, to work independently and start their own shop. And all of these people were absolutely the most inspiring people I had ever met in my life. They had honed their craft. They were absolute experts at what they did. They just wanted to work on their own terms, which I could so relate to. It was so understandable. They just said the way that work was happening was not suitable for me. Maybe they needed to move out of a major market. Maybe they didn't want to travel all the time. Maybe they didn't want to work 80 hours a week. Any number of things that make the way that work happens in our industry incongruent with our own humanity, right? We're all so familiar with this. So as I hear more and more of these stories, um, you know, the frustration builds in me because these people shouldn't have had to be pushed out. They shouldn't have to now work so hard to be respected as an independent practitioner, as a freelancer. It shouldn't be so difficult for them to connect with the biggest brands in the world and with agencies where they can share their craft and share their gifts and have both the career they want and the lives and dignity that they deserve. This is what prompted me to start We Are Rosie in 2018. Um, I built it initially as an access point. 
I wanted We Are Rosie to provide a sense of belonging, a place where everybody is truly welcomed. Anybody who's working in an independent fashion can come to We Are Rosie um, and feel like they have a home. At the same time, we'll take really good care of them. We're gonna pay them weekly. We're gonna offer them benefits. And most importantly, we're gonna give them access to economic opportunity as an independent practitioner. We're gonna connect them to work with the biggest brands in the world that should be honored to have this talent working on their business. We're gonna connect them to work at agencies where they can do project-based work they're uniquely suited for. On the flip side, for the biggest brands and agencies in the world, we are going to connect them with the most brilliant talent they've never had access to, right? At scale, we have 5,000 people within the We Are Rosie community over the last two years that have joined, ranging from former C-suite from agencies and brands to people with two or three years of experience who are self-taught brilliant creatives. We have data scientists, we have analysts, we have strategists and everything in between. We wanna connect these people to brands and agencies that want to get work done with teams that are uniquely suited for the work. Over the past two years, we have completed 300 projects across 70 clients, including 25 Fortune 500 brands. I am a pretty competitive person. I played softball for 13 years, year round for many of those years. I had really high hopes for what this business could do when I started, but this is beyond my wildest dreams. The talent that we have put to work is like nothing I've ever seen. The people that we get to work alongside every day absolutely blow my mind. And our clients say the same. So we've seen 100% client retention coming back to We Are Rosie to get more talent or teams of talent to tackle project-based work for them. Because when you, when you take people who are really happy doing the work, they do their best work. One of the other things that we've recognized beyond just creating a happy place for people to do their best work is that working in an independent and freelance capacity has other incredible impacts on our society at large. This includes sustainability, this includes inclusion, equality, justice, accessibility for people who can't or don't want to come into an office full time. The, the impact is so much bigger than what I initially re recognized when I started the business. About six months ago, we decided, as we all have to do in this industry, to put data behind our own findings. And we brought in one of our own Rosies to, to work on the Rosie Report, which came out about a month ago. The Rosie Report was our first attempt at taking a look at everything that we had learned at large in this industry from this really cool macro view we have. Like, working inside six holding companies, working, working inside 25 brands, working inside tech companies. We Are Rosie has a really interesting view on the challenges that our industry has in moving a more modern way of work forward, of really creating an environment where independent talent, where freelance talent feels included and able to participate in traditional work. So here's what we learned. And this is absolutely gonna blow your mind. So we interviewed industry leaders, we interviewed change makers, clients, our own community of 5,000 Rosies. And one of the coolest things that we found, which I think is, a, is gonna dispel something that a lot of people think about freelancers, about 35% of independent workers or freelancers in the marketing space will say, absolutely no way will I take a full-time job. What this means for brands and agencies looking to access truly diverse, truly inclusive talent is that if you're ignoring this segment of talent and of people who can complete work projects for you, you are not inclusive. 35% of people say the work, the way that work happens in our industry is incongruent with their lives. In addition, <laughs> We found that flexible work provides absolutely incredible opportunity to otherized populations that our industry probably doesn't even realize it's excluding. We have people in the ROSI community who are transitioning genders. We have people in our community who are caregivers for elder parents or family members. I'm not just talking about demographics. I'm talking about life circumstances, the very things that make us human, that make us actually better employees and actually better contributors because of the richness of our own personal experiences. But 
these, these life experiences often don't jive with the way that we're insisting work happens in marketing. In 2019, 90% of the Rosies that we put to work worked remotely. This was pre-COVID. 40% of the Rosies that we put to work represented Black, Indigenous, and people of color talent. 100% of our Rosies have a human story to share about why they've chosen this way to work. And it matters, right? Their humanity, their dignity matters. We're all human. We all have lives outside of work. And I would, I, I would be surprised to find if very many of you have, have not experienced at least a season in your life where working independently would make more sense for you. We also found that the shackles of traditional employment can sometimes weigh quite heavily on the quality of the work. 74% of marketing freelancers report that they're doing their best work working in this way. 57% of full-time employees feel that they're doing their best work. That leaves 43% of people working in a traditional full-time capacity in our industry that feel like they are not set up to do their best work. 66% of freelancers feel motivated and fully engaged in their work compared to 59% of full-time employees. So there's a big gap there. And this, this, this corroborates everything that we have found in our conversations with the people doing the work for We Are Rosie. Our Rosie community insists that when they're able to work in a way that makes sense for their lives, they can show up authentically, they can show up more engaged, and they can deliver their gifts often faster and more efficiently and without any bullshit, which is a gift, um, but also in a way that keeps their clients really satisfied. One of the other things we found is that subconscious and some conscious barriers still plague the marketing and advertising industry. No surprise that this also impacts freelance talent. We found that freelance talent or an independent, flexible talent strategy is often a response or triage tactic versus a thoughtful strategy that's planned for on an annual basis. Freelancers are still stigmatized as not doing real work. I can assure you the 300 projects that we have done over the last two years that range from relaunching an iconic brand to rebranding a business to segmenting the audience of one of the world's largest telecoms is real work. Only 26% of marketers feel that freelance work is respected. 76% of marketers see full-time work as being highly respected. We have a big gap to fill. This is the work we're doing every day. Lots of organizations still hang on to the notion that creative collaboration only happens in person. We're disproving this myth every day, and now we're all disproving this myth in the midst of COVID. 49% of marketers say leadership is the roadblock in making remote collaboration the norm. This was, this was taken shortly before COVID based on our qualitative research and the conversations that I'm having both with agencies and brands, I would still say this number is pretty high. Too many leaders are putting up unnecessary arbitrary roadblocks to remote collaboration and remote collaboration and remote work is a form of inclusion. Both the pandemic and the national uprising and movement for Black Lives has us in an extremely critical and opportunistic moment. This is an inflection point for our industry, every single one of us. This isn't a tough phase that we need to get through. This isn't something that's gonna go away in a few weeks. This is a reckoning, a watershed moment that we've been heading towards, barreling towards for decades. The universe, our industry, the talent is calling on us to build new systems that are in service of everyone. My challenge to our collective industry leadership is to look within your own organization and reevaluate your entire approach to work and talent. Recognize that remote work and flexible talent and a flexible talent strategy are fundamental necessities to true inclusion. It's time to go back to the drawing board because we can't retrofit what's right for the people into an exclusionary system that was built decades upon decades ago, not in service of everyone doing the work. I'm really thrilled 
to say that We Are Rosie is absolutely part of the solution. We are not the whole solution, but we're a part of it. And we must all do our part. I love the work that we're doing here so much. I wholeheartedly believe that bringing economic opportunity and prosperity and access to power and wealth to marginalized communities is the most important work that I can be doing in this world at this time. But we all have an obligation to pursue liberty, equality, and justice within our own home, within our own space of work, within our own sphere of influence. When we create modern work systems that fit into modern life, the work will be incredible, the people will be happier, the money will come, the clients will be thrilled. We see it every day at We Are Rosie. Happy people do better work. It's time to remove all the barriers, it's time to remove all the bullshit, it's time to remove all the excuses that have kept us from creating a better way to work and do it now. As proof of our own truth, and the transition that we have seen um, and the power that we have seen in supporting people to work in a way that makes sense for their lives. I am so thrilled to share with you one of our very own case studies with our client Bumble and one of our absolutely incredible Rosies, Annalisa Cantu. So please join us now for this live case study. Thank you.